Adventures in Financial Independence Our adventure in financial independence started 21 years, 7 months, and 24 days ago. Okay, I admit it, I'm a numbers nerd. We were 38 years old and full of energy for whatever came our way. Over the last two decades, we've had more experiences and challenges than we can mention, but suffice it to say, we're still here. Soon we're about to cut a new notch on the pull of life. What is it about turning 60? Did somebody remove some of the sand from the hourglass? We aren't even close to finishing our journeys to new cultures and countries, and sometimes we feel like time is running out. Do it while you're young was the advice I received from retirees back in the 1980s when I was managing their money at Dean Winter Rentals. They would come into my office and tell me tales of their latest cruise around the Caribbean, an excursion through Europe, or an outing on the links, as I sat there trapped behind my desk. My mind would race trying to figure out how we too could live this lifestyle. And here we are, two decades later, living a life that most will only dream of, even though, for many, it is within their grasp. Here are some high points. Colorful characters, unique geographical destinations, and distinct experiences of world travel over these years have strengthened and pushed us, forcing our personal limitations and boundaries to stretch. Climbing an active volcano in Guatemala with rocks spitting out of his throat was one of the dumber things we've done as adults, but boy what a view. We cooked dinner from our RV for 26 people while living on a ranch in northern Montana. Then we watched the aurora borealis in the evenings, hot air balloons in the early morning light, and rafted wild whitewater rivers on hot afternoons. Playing tennis in tropical Thailand, I was the only English speaker on the court, and occasionally learned Thai massage to correct our aches and pains. We slept in a Vietnamese junk in Halong Bay, dove for lobsters and grilled them beachside on the Caribbean island of Nevis, and bargained for rubies, sapphires, and diamonds in Burma. But not all of our journeys had worldwide glamour. We were honored to provide end-of-life care for Acacia's aging mom and dad, and my own father as well. Financial independence gave us the time and the ability to choose to do this, something we could have never done had we stayed bound to our jobs. After all of this emotional and physical intensity, we headed to Ecuador. Here we met the Quechna indigenous peoples, stayed in their homes, sought out volcanic hot springs in the Andes Mountains, and lodged in the ancient sacred valley of Viacambamba. We have lived amongst the Maya on the shores of beautiful Lake Atitlan, Guatemala, built tennis courts in Chapala, Mexico, and bussed through both the North Island and South Island of New Zealand. There are so many places, people, and cultures to see that when we look at a map, it's like a candy store to us. And on the eve of us turning 60, the clock keeps ticking. Our goal is to make the most of it. Our advice? If you want to make your dreams come true, you have to build a floor underneath them. Practicalities like tracking your spending let you know how much money you are putting out per day. Remember I told you I was a numbers nerd. For the 7,907 days we have been retired since 1991, we have averaged $61.08 per day which is 22295 per year. And so far in 2012, we are running at $53.24 a day. Not bad, huh? As a youngster in the brokerage business, I was told, if you work for the next five years like nobody else will, you can live the rest of your life like nobody else can. I took that advice to heart. If you're willing to eliminate all of your debt, even your mortgage, your options will be unlimited. Imagine your lifestyle if you were not paying off financial obligations each month and all of your income was yours to save, invest, or spend. Take control of your finances and become your own money manager. You don't have to get fancy, but learn the language of money and the terms that are used in investing. Just by doing this simple step, you'll be way ahead of the crowd. As the world changes, we adapt, and we went car free. In the years since we've taken the leap to financial independence, we continue to make major shifts in our particular lifestyle, involving it into what it is today. After much consideration, we became car-free in the year 2009. We liberated ourselves from car payments, maintenance, 
insurance, and fuel costs. The money we have saved by making this move allows us to hire private drivers or take a taxi to our destinations, not to mention boats, planes, subways, skyways, or any other sort of transport available. We do maintain our driver's licenses and are able to rent a car or drive when we visit family and friends. We also started doing house sitting. As housing costs are one of the largest areas of expense in any household, adding the option of house sitting has brought comfort to our traveling style and has positively affected our cost in this category. Visiting countries for long periods of time in beautiful homes with access to a kitchen and located in a neighborhood environment is an attractive alternative to living in hotels. Currently, we are staying in a house in the historic colonial city of Antigua, Guatemala. Our place is surrounded by three volcanoes, awesome views, and comes with a five-day-a-week maid. While we still enjoy the ease of hotels, which are walking distance to restaurants, shops, and activities, having the choice of house sitting adds an enriching flavor and a different perspective to our travels. And now we're going naked. The turmoil, fear, and expense and questions about the quality of care that surrounds the delivery of health care in the United States has convinced us to drop our U.S.-based health insurance policy. Among travelers, this is known as going naked. It's a lot scarier to talk about it and to imagine doing it than to actually make the shift. We have been proponents of medical tourism for years. Excellent, affordable medical service is available in many countries where we travel, and we personally have received quality treatment in Thailand, Mexico, and Guatemala. Due to our extensive traveling and seeing the caliber of medical care available in foreign countries firsthand, we are confident of this decision. In our experience, the only place we feel frightened of becoming ill and needing medical attention is in the States. So when we go there, we buy traveler's policy. No doubt there will be people who will balk at this approach, and clearly this decision is not for everyone. However, the cost savings on the policy that we are not using is noticeable, and we use those savings to self-insure. We also made adjustments to our investment style. We wrote out the volatility of the markets for the last 13 years and then realized that as we age, long-term investing is getting shorter for us by the day. It's one thing to be in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s to buy, hold, and forget about it. But with another significant age marker on the horizon, our time on this planet is limited. Therefore, in this market climate, we have decided to take a proactive approach, realizing profits when opportunities arrive and buying back at a later time. Let me state that we are only actively investing with our IRAs, so there is no tax ramifications, and we still have holdings in ETFs such as SPY, VTI, and DVY in non-IRA accounts that are left untouched. However, avoiding another 15-20% to 20 plunge in the markets in any given year outweigh any lost opportunity cost. Our journey through retirement has been a remarkable experience and one that we intend to continue. Why not take a look at your finances today and survey your resources? You might be closer than you think. And if we can live this lifestyle, you can too. For more information on financial independence and travel, please visit our bookstore at retireearlylifestyle.com. And thank you for viewing.